Good afternoon, everybody. As he said, I'm Marcela Santos. I'm the psychologist volunteer from the Colombian Association. Uh, for those of who, oh, doesn't work. Yeah, it does. Um, for your, those of you who don't know, Colombia is located in South America. Uh, we are a huge association of only five volunteers, but we are very eager to learn and expect a lot from this uh, first alliance meeting we're attending. And we're here to present our program, Caring for Caregivers. She's Elizabeth Rodriguez, our volunteer, wife of Juvenal Bayona, patient of ALS for more than 18 years. He's fully functional, dependent, he can still eat, and he doesn't have a ventilation. They've been married for 22 years and live alone. They have two stepdaughters. This is a brief summary of what her every mornings are like. At 6 a.m., she wakes up and wakes him up. She pulls him to his wheelchair and rolls him to the bathroom where she takes a bath with him. When the shower is over, she puts cream over his body, then puts his diaper on, gets him dressed, and then at 7 a.m., they're fully dressed. At 7.05, she takes him to his chair while she prepares breakfast. She gives him his breakfast slowly in small bites so he doesn't choke. At 7.45, their housemaid arrives, and Elizabeth leaves Juvenal in her care while she goes to work and runs home errands. At 9 a.m., she takes a coffee break and escapes to the bank to do some bank errands. At 12 p.m., she gets lunchtime. She goes back to work after the bank errand and then takes lunchtime. In her lunchtime, she goes to the insurance to pick up her medication, the medication sent for Juvenal. After an hour and a half of that long line, she grabs a quick lunch wherever she can and calls home to see how her husband is doing. From 2 to 6, she goes back to work. And at 6 p.m., she stops by the supermarket on the way home to buy some groceries for him. At 7, at 7 p.m., she gets home. Their housemate leaves, and she watches the news with him and tells him about her day, communicating through a board. At 7.30 p.m., she makes dinner again and slowly feeds him small bites so he doesn't choke. At 10.30 p.m., she, she gets ready for him. She gets him ready for bed, and at 11 p.m., they're both asleep. At 1.30 a.m., she wakes up, changes position, and goes back to sleep. At 3.30 a.m., she wakes up and changes position back again. At 5.30, she wakes up and changes position back again. This is a typical day of a person, a family caregiver of a patient with ALS. This isn't just Elizabeth's daily routine. It's a daily routine of hundreds of family caregivers of patients living with ALS all over the world. We often think about program providing for the patient but we forget about their children, their wives, and family caregivers. Caregiving implies modifying a lifestyle, facing the pain of knowing, of facing the unknown, and seeing the loved one physically ill and losing limitations day by day. So we're here to present our program. <laughs> In Colombia's health system, we don't have a hospice or clinics like you guys have or we've heard here in this alliance. Uh, the only thing the health system gives is the medication with a lot of fights, a lot of lawyers and um, petitions so that we can get our rights not vulnerable. And the caregiver is left with the whole uh, burden of, the, of caregiving for the patient. Uh, most of the people that caregive are the wives or um, mothers of the patients. Also, like Jennifer said, a female, 80% are female. And uh, that's why we saw, because the government wasn't helping, we say, we, we saw that the person with all the burden was a family caregiver. So we decided to do a program for them. We joined forces with the National University of Colombia who has a program for a family caregivers of people with chronic diseases. Using similar parameters, authorized by them, obviously, we did our very own program just for family caregivers of patients with ALS. So as I said, 82% of our, our caregivers are female, only 18% are male, and 55% oh, are employed. Uh, and 
uh, are not employed. 23% uh, are unemployed. So that, that gives you kind of the uh, where we stand in Colombia. The experience of being a caregiver. As I said, the, being a caregiver implies modifying a lifestyle, facing a limitation, altering the ability to socialize, losses and fear of death of a loved one, burnout and impotence, feelings of sadness and uncertainty, guilt and censorship by society. This caregiver has some needs. They need social support, they need financial support, emotional support, and they need knowledge about the rights and duties as a caregiver. And they also need recognition, maybe the most important one, not just from the patient, but from the rest of the society. How do we do that? We do that with a support system by, uh, hopefully, from the health system of our government someday. But right now, uh, we're, our support system is to do with the Colombian Association, the support group. So the program. A program is it's designed to strengthen the ability of caregiving and family caregivers of patients with ALS. And the aim is to reduce the burden of caregiving by an analyzing the experience of caregiving, analyzing the limitations and the abilities of those caregivers and the patients. Um, it's once a week on Tuesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Only caregivers can attend. There are no um, patients rec receive, not receive. The, uh, patients can come because it's a, a space just for caregivers so they can express their feelings freely. Um, with other equals and they can um, recognize that their experience and what they're feeling is not bad. It's a non-judgment uh, room. So the program has three levels. Each level has three workshops. The workshops are presential and non-presential. This means uh, that we give a booklet to every participant and uh, in the booklet they work out during the sessions. Some sessions, some workshops are to work at home with the families so um, the caregiver can write in the booklet with the patient to see, analyze the experience of caring. How do we understand knowledge? Caring isn't just about a good intention. It's about, it's a science that implies attending the needs of someone else in an appropriate way. It's knowing who the other person is, their abilities, their limitations, and their needs in a verbal and nonverbal way. Then we understand courage is the ability to face the unknown. It's not a blind courage. It's a, a courage based on past events and introspection, where the caregiver is able to trust their abilities and instincts and face what's coming. And then patience. Uh, we have found that patience is the central the focus point in every caregiving relationship. It's about giving time and not taking, taking it from the patient and learning how to listen, understand, and give time and space. It's an opportunity to learn from each other, and it implies tolerance and mutual respect. So um, the first level knowledge has three workshops. They, both, all of them aim to seek response to these concerns. Who shares the experience of giving and receiving care? How do we prepare ourselves to continue caregiving a relative with ALS? And what do we know and what do we need to know to be a skillful caregiver? So this three uh, workshops is the experience of being a family caregiver, the experience of accepting the role of caregiving, and the knowledge required and acquired to comprehend and facilitate the role of caregiving. We don't, in, in this in knowledge, it's not just about the disease because uh, most people that come to our program have already lived a, lo a long time caring for someone. So it's just about knowing who they are and the other person is so we can resolve the situation. Courage. Um, to strengthen courage in caregiving, the program teaches decision making, social skills, how to ask and get social support from others, and we empower the caregiver in their role. We validate them. Is it one minute? <laughs> Okay, I thought you were going to the bathroom or something. <laughs> and then patience. As I said before, patience is an essential characteristic for caring. The experience of growing while being a caregiver and patience associated to the ability of taking care of themselves 
in order to take care of others. If they don't take care of themselves, no one will take care of them and the patient. So that's what we try. What have we achieved? We have achieved that the caregivers accept they need help, recognize they're not alone, and recognize themselves as a valuable person. They strengthen security and confidence in the future, and they validate their experience as caregivers from sharing their knowledge and feelings with equals. We have had a different challenges. It doesn't turn. Okay, we have had a different challenges. The first is we're only located in Bogota at this time. It's a presential, like I said, it's a present um, program. So our aim is to expand it all over the country with other universities that could help us. And <laughs> don't look at me like that. And, and then uh, hopefully after we go nationwide, we would like to go worldwide with more caregiving programs along the world. And thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Hi, I just wanted to uh, just say congratulations on your program. It sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I really do hope you're able to expand it. Uh, on average, how many people show up for the the meetings and how do you get the word out to other people to be able to attend? Yeah, it's been an average since 2008 when we started. It's been more than 200 people. Uh, only in Bogota, as I said before, it's been hard to get the caregivers to go because uh, they claim they don't have anyone else to leave the patient with, which is, it's not a claim. Like, it's true because the other, other caregivers have works also. So the only person they can leave the patient with is working, so uh, it's been hard to get them. But now th with um, Jennifer's presentation, we have got a great light bulb on, and we are we're thinking now. We were talking about it. We, we should do a virtual one. We have some limitations of technology in Colombia. We're not gonna lie, um, but we can train people in each city so we can uh, teach them how to go online. So it would be a great idea. And thank you, Jennifer, for that presentation. Thank you. Hi, uh, great presentation. I and I may have missed this. I was outside for a second. Um, this is an amazing program. Where did this come from? Where did you learn this? Is this rooted in science or knowledge or your own experiences? Or would you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, and um, it was it was a, we joined forces with the National University of Colombia. It's the biggest university in Colombia with a nursing department. They had this program since 1987, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. And we decided to, with well, the, um, the headmaster of the nursing department is a volunteer at our association. Her dad was diagnosed with ALS and died of ALS. So she, she thought the need to do a special one for the ALS association. So that's what we did in 2008 when we started our association with this, this program. Similar parameters because ALS is also a chronic disease. But it's uh, specifically more like, um, for example, training, training decision-making in emergencies, how to prepare the family for a respiratory arrest, how to react, who do you call, what order, um, you know, stuff like that. So it's specifically for ALS. With par parameters that it is an investigation, it is um, like the, the one for chronic diseases, it is an investigation, it is a aval, avald, I don't know if that word work. I don't know if that word exists here, but <laughs> it is proven to, to work in, in the other, in chronic diseases. So uh, in this new investigation we're heading to is to prove it with ALS patients. But like I said, we've only had 200 people in eight years. So we'd like to get more and more. And the other thing I forgot to say is that through this, um, through this program, we have created a great support team and families get to know other families with ALS in Bogota. So they support each other with wheelchairs, with medication, with, it's, it's been great. So yeah, that's about it.
Thank you. Great presentation. I um, maybe I missed a point because it, you start uh, with a story. It's about a family members who take care of her, her husband. And uh, how about the program? Is it the target audience of the program is uh, for family caregivers or the professional caregivers? It's quite different. It's just family caregivers. Only people that live with patients with ALS. It can be wife, mother, sons, uh, daughters. Uh, but uh, there's no professionals in the program, just the ones that direct it. It's directed by an interdisciplinary team, a psychologist, a, a nurse, and a family caregiver of someone with ALS. So it's, it's pretty, but it's just for family caregivers. Thank you.